What's your favorite kind of food? Do you like dessert foods, like cakes or cookies, or how about fruits and vegetables? Do you ever wonder who makes the foods you eat in restaurants or see on TV, or how they're made? Stick around to find out. It's time for Confused. joining us. I'm Ellie. And I'm Sam. And, and this, this is, is Confused, Confused, a show that answers your questions that you write to us. Questions like this. Dear Confused, sometimes at school I see people cook in the cafeteria and it looks like fun. I want to cook when I grow up like the chefs I see on TV and in movies. I want to cook noodles and broccoli. My mom told me that to cook you have to learn how to follow directions and be careful. What else do you have to learn? And what do cooks make while they're at work? Thank you, Claire Bauman. Thanks, Claire. Say, Ellie, that reminds me. I tried baking a cake once. Oh yeah, what happened? Let's just say I had a badder experience. Well, for those of you who want to learn more about cooking, from baking cakes to flipping pizzas, any way you slice it, this show's for you. Ooh. What's on your mind, Sam? Uh, I'm just thinking about some of my favorite foods. Did you realize that chickens don't really have fingers and buffaloes don't really have wings? I guess I haven't. You know me. I'm just cooking up some food for thought. All right, Sam. Any more bad jokes and I'm putting you in time out. Mmm. Pudding. I think it's time we talk to some real experts. From tossing pizzas... To tossing salads. Let's toss it to Dr. Clear it up to see what we can learn. Hey kids, I'm Dr. Clear It Up, and this is my friend Cornelius. We're here to tell you what the experts are saying. But I thought we were the experts. We're the experts who help the experts. But what if we don't understand? Then we've got to find experts to help the experts who help the experts. Now I'm confused. Well, then you've come to the right place. We hear you're confused and want to learn how to be a cook. So we went around town to find some answers. My name is Jonathan. I am the founder of Milo's Whole World Gourmet, a specialty foods company based here in Athens. My name is Tom Landowski. I'm, the, uh, I'm a chef instructor here at Hawking College. My name is Felicia McNichols, and I am a Hawking College graduate. I have an associate's degree in culinary arts and baking, and right now I'm working on a bachelor's degree online through Franklin University. Hi, my name is John. I'm the owner of Avalanche Pizza in Athens, Ohio. being a chef really hadn't occurred to me until I was in high school. It was maybe my junior year. Um, a lady from the Pittsburgh Culinary Institute. Culinary is a big fancy term used for cooking. It can be food or an item used while cooking in the kitchen. I came in and was talking about going to culinary school and I had always loved cooking and didn't realize that it was something I could do and like, you know, get paid for. It could be my job. I didn't see it as work. It was more of a fun thing. Uh, I've been in restaurants my whole life. Uh, when I was 14 years old, I was washing dishes in restaurants. And uh, the reason I got into the pizza business, we moved here to a college town and college students love pizza. Mmm, Cornelius loves pizza too. The way that I got started in this business was we're here in the kitchens at AceNet. It's a commercial kitchen, and I started a catering business here. Catering is the business of bringing food to a place that is not a restaurant. If you had a job in catering, you might do mobile catering, where a caterer serves food directly from a vehicle or cart. Event catering could include box lunches or full catering like a buffet. You might find event catering at a wedding. Finally, industrial catering includes small finger foods, 
You might find it on an airplane or in schools. Making food for parties and things. And there's a facility that allows us to make sauces. So one thing led to another and here I am making sauces today. I was working in a restaurant when I was in high school, like I said, like um, 16, 17. And I continued to do that while I went to school to pay for school and things like that. And then when I got to be probably about 23 or 24, so it was a little bit later, I started a little bit later and I decided that that's really what I wanted to do. I was going to school to be a history teacher uh, and then that history teacher, chef, I, it just didn't weigh out. I thought it was a lot more, much more of a career for me uh, to be involved in cooking and I really liked it. To be a cook, you'd need some really great skills. You'd need a, a, lot, a lot of love for food. If you love food and love to taste different things and have an open mind, you'll be a fabulous chef. The types of skills you need for this job are many. You, I end up doing everything. I do a lot of sales. I do a lot of, you know, I actually make the products, the sauces and the dressings. I do a lot of shipping. Uh, I do a lot of web stuff. I do a lot of design. You basically have to be what's called a renaissance man, somebody who does a little bit of everything to do a company like this. My favorite type of food to make is desserts because they're sweet and I love sweets and chocolate's the best. Um, I also like breakfast. I love omelets and crepes and pancakes, waffles, anything I can put fruit in sweet stuff on. I like to cook mostly anything. Um, I'm pretty open to most foods. Um, I'm from the Midwest. I grew up in Wisconsin, so I do lean like a lot of kids towards meat and potato type of stuff. Uh, but there's an amazing amount of vegetables and things available. And really my favorite food of all time, since I was very little, is uh, probably uh, a hamburger. Why is it called a hamburger if it's not made out of ham? That's my favorite. Gourmet is a fancy word for expensive. <laughs> a lot of people uh, would say that if you look at products, if you go to a gourmet store, what that means is the products are going to cost more, but what it also means is that the, is that the sauces and the dressings and everything else you see there are going to be better quality. Just like, and what's really crazy, when you see food shows and you'll see Emeril say mirepoix, and he'll say uh, some different kind of French type of terms, sauté. Sauté means to cook or brown in a pan containing a small quantity of butter. And things like that. A lot of people wonder why that is, it, it's so uh, influenced by like, the French language. But it's the same thing, if you study to be a doctor or a lawyer, what's the terminology, or a botanist, or if you're a zoologist, you learn Latin terminology because they were the ones that first write down those kind of things. Well, it's the same in our um, profession. Um, back in the Renaissance time, the French really adopted a lot of things from the Italians and they started to write down cookbooks. These sauces are a line of uh, pasta sauces from Italy. So we have some Italian flavors and then we also have some salad dressings that have fruit in them. So they're all natural and we make these all from fresh ingredients. About a week ahead of time, we order all of the ingredients for these products. A lot of them we already have here in the warehouse, like the tomatoes we buy in big pallet sized quantities, huge quantities. Um, all of the fresh ingredients, of course, we end up getting uh, fresh a day before we end up producing the products. So all the ingredients come in, then we have a crew that comes in and they wash all the herbs, they open up all the cans of tomatoes, and then we put them into a great big cooking vat and everything gets cooked up to 180 degrees, which is almost boiling, it's very hot. And then once that's, and we do that because you have to kill all the bacteria and the bad stuff that goes in. So when you open the jar six months later, it's still good. Um, and then we put it into the, the jars, we let it cool down. And once it's cooled down, we put, uh, we put the labels on it. We put a code that tells the date that it's made, which is very helpful for the people we're selling it to because they want to make sure it doesn't expire and actually if you look at a lot of products on the shelf in your grocery store you'll see all of them have some sort of code on them and then they get shipped out to the stores. Let's see here our smoothie recipe calls for a couple cups of yogurt. Um, it's a smoothie it doesn't have to be exact so we're just gonna put a little bit of yogurt in here. We're gonna add two and a half cups of milk
then I have some extra strawberries here. We're gonna put those in. And then I'm gonna put the banana in. I don't wanna put this whole thing in like this, so I'm gonna cut it up just a little bit. Now we're going to turn this on. It's important to put a towel over it and hold it down so we don't make a mess. For this, I've got some fun glasses. I'm just going to pour in our smoothie. You can also use, if you want it more icy, you can freeze your fruit to put it in there. Um, you can put ice in there. If you want it a little bit sweeter, you can put a little sugar in it or even honey. But these are very healthy for you. It's got fruit, yogurt, it gives you calcium. This is a good, healthy dessert. So, put in our great straws. And there you go. favorite memory about cooking. Well, when I was a, a young boy, I was about seven or eight, and I took a cooking class for the first time. And the, it was a woman in the church who was giving it. I think she was trying to get some free meals for herself out of it, although she had to be a saint to work with us. And our homework was to go home and to make a dinner for our family. And so I decided I was going to make a beef stew, but I was a child. I didn't like vegetables. So I ended up leaving out the carrots, and I left out the potatoes, and I left out the onions, and I left out the celery, and so it was basically just meat and broth. And my family found that very humorous. <laughs> I have a funny story. Uh, actually, it's probably the reason why I got into the pizza business. Uh, I have six, five brothers. Oops, I have five brothers. And when we used to get pizza at home, my mom would only buy one or two pizzas, and we would gobble them up so fast. But what the secret to do is when you have lots of brothers is to grab all the cheese from the middle and pull your slice at the same time and pull all the cheese off of the other slices. That's the best way to get it. I got to remember that next time Dr. C and I get pizza. I'm not going to let you have my pizza. Get over on them. Well, any advice I have for any, any kids wanting to get into this business, which is a great business, is to pay attention to your teachers and your moms and dads and taste as much stuff in the world as possible. Keep your mind open to everything that other people eat. If you close your mind to food, you'll close your mind to other things too. I think you're never too young to start cooking. You can ask your parents. You know, if you can help them make dinner and start learning some basic things, how to crack an egg, how to boil water, things like that, and work your way up from there. Well, I say, it, it, for the young people, if there's something they see, whether on TV or the cooking channel or something they like, I don't care if it's making jello jigglers, do that with your brothers and sisters or your mom and dad or your grandma or grandpa. You, you, get, you get so much more out of it than the joy of eating. That's all for us today. Bye, kids. Well, I sure hope that helped with your question, Claire, but stick around for a second serving of Confused after the break. Coming up on Confused, it's Curiosity Corner. So grab your chef hat, because we're going to make some food. There is a place where a total stranger will give you their blood. There's a place where someone you never knew will save your child from drowning. A place where people from seven states away will turn up at your door and give you food and shelter after a flood. There's a place where a person who doesn't look like you, talk like you, or dress like you will stretch out their hand and put it across your shoulders and say, everything is going to be okay. That place is called America, where we look out for each other, and it's up to us to keep it that way. When you help the American Red Cross, you help America. 
As a mom, I know what it's like. You want to be there for them and make them feel better. As a pediatrician, I know that the best thing you can do is to make sure that the care you give is the right care for the condition. Antibiotics don't work on viral bugs like colds and the flu. For viruses, fluids and plenty of rest are best. And of course, hugs always help. Talk to your doctor for more information about when antibiotics work and when they don't. Did you know that in Japan, the most popular pizza topping is squid? Welcome back to Confused. El Ellie, what are you trying to do? I wanted to give this pizza tossing a try myself, but the dough keeps sticking to my hands. Why don't you add some flour? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're in some deep dough, Sam. Hey kids, this is Cami, our camera clicking crusader. Say, Cami, could you help us whip up a solution to this mess that we've made? I'd love to help you guys with your pizza problems, but I'm actually here today to see how well you know your way around the kitchen. I took some photographs of some common cooking items at my house. I wanted to see if you can tell me what they are. All right, kids, you might want to help Sam and Ellie with this. Huh. Oh, but I'll cook the competition. <laughs> right. Here's photograph number one. I'll give you a hint. It makes cheese great. Did you guess cheese grater? Oh, I thought it was a cracker. All right. You should flat out get this next one. I, I know. know. I, I know. know. It's a, a rolling pin. Good job, guys. All right. Here's photograph number three. I can't tell. It looks like the picture's all mashed up. Well, maybe that's because it's a potato masher. You're correct. Good job. Look who's cooking who now. <laughs> All right, try this next one. That looks like a timer of some sort. You're getting hotter. Did you guess an oven? OK, this next one is probably the hardest. All right, can't guess what it is? I'll give you a hint. It helps you keep your cards organized. I sure hope you have all the ingredients to solve this one. It's a recipe card organizer. Oh, that's creative. My mom uses one of those. Only the best cooks know how to stay organized and follow directions. Well, thanks for joining us, Cammie. We hope to see you again soon. Yep. Well, I better be off taking more photographs. I'll see you guys later. Bye, Cammy. Say, kids, let's see what we can cook up with Lisa in the Curiosity Corner. Hey, kids. Welcome to the Curiosity Corner. Looking at all this food has made me kind of hungry. And I hope you're hungry, too, because I have some fun recipes to share with you today. I'd like to teach you how to make fruit fun trail mix and smiling apple faces. Now you'll need an adult to help you get all these ingredients and make sure you have permission before you start these after school snacks. But let's get started. I'll teach you how to make fruit fun trail mix first. For this project you'll need a medium to large size bowl and a mixing spoon to stir all your ingredients together. Now this is a creative snack where you can use things like one cup of fruit flavored cereal circles. I also have cereal puffs cup of mixed nuts. Here I'm using peanuts. I have dried fruits such as bananas. I also have pineapple and papaya and raisins. Now the fun about this project is you can really use any kind of ingredients you like as long as they're dry and colorful. To make the trail mix what you do is you just add all your ingredients together. It's really quite simple. Really not too hard. But remember we're trying to make a healthy snack. So you don't have to add a lot of colorful candy to make it a good treat. If you don't like any of these particular ingredients, or if you're allergic to peanuts or something, you can substitute these snacks for something that you like better. And when you're done pouring all of your food into the bowl, next step is to mix it up. 
Now be careful when you're mixing your snack. You don't want to crush the cereal, but pretty soon, you're done. You got your trail mix. It's that simple. Now this is a great snack to share with people at parties or ask mom to make a little baggie of, the, of this for you and stick it in your lunch. But I'm going to clear this stuff away and make room because now I'm going to teach you how to make some smiling apple faces. Now for this snack you need an apple, red, yellow, green, color doesn't matter. You need some peanut butter and a butter knife or spreading knife to spread your peanut butter. Mini marshmallows for the teeth and also an apple slicer or a paring knife if you don't have one of these. The first step in making your smiling apple faces is to take your apple and place it on the cutting board so it makes several even apple slices. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And a core. I'm going to get rid of the core because I don't need that anymore. I'm going to take two apple slices here, set them on my plate, and get out my peanut butter and spreading knife. You can take a big old glob of peanut butter and spread it carefully on one side of one of the apples. Now peanut butter can be pretty sticky, so you might need some napkins nearby and wash your hands when you're done. I'm going to spread this on one side of two different slices of apples. And then the secret ingredient. Here come the teeth for our smile, mini marshmallows. I'm going to take a mini marshmallow and stick it, layering the corners, the edges of this apple slice. Depending on how big your apple is, you can fit maybe four or five marshmallows on there. I have one, two, three, four teeth in my smile. And here comes the upper lip. I'm going to take this other piece of apple and put it face down, peanut butter side down, right on top. Squeeze it nice and tight so it can't go anywhere. And here you go. You have your smiling apple face. Hope you enjoyed these new recipes. Thanks for joining me on the Curiosity Corner. I'll see you next time. Why did the cookie go to the hospital? Find out the answer after the break. John says, I'm thinking about writing the story of my life. Oh, I know. I got this one, Jimbo. John says he wants to write the story of his life. And then he says, this is going to be tough. And then you say, yeah, Great Expectations has already been taken. Every comic strip, video game, TV show, movie, and hit record begins with a writer. Writers. Brought to you by the National Commission on Writing, which reminds you that writing is essential. Why did the cookie go to the hospital? Because he felt crummy. Welcome back once again. We have Dion here with us and she picked out a great book that goes along with today's topic of being a cook. Welcome Dion. Thanks Ellie. The book I chose today is one of my favorites from when I was a child. It's called Frank and Ernest by Alexander Day. Now there's a lot of characters in this book so I invited some of my friends to help out. But I'll be reading the lines of the two main characters, Frank, who's a bear, and Ernest, who's an elephant. Hope you enjoy. This looks like just what I need. I'll only be gone three days, but my diner is very important to me. I hope you can handle it. Don't worry, Miss Miller. We will take as good care of it as you would. Look here, Ernest. Diners have a language of their own, and we will need to learn it before we can wait on people. It's really beautiful, Frank. It would be great fun doing this job, but I think it would also be a huge challenge. I'll take a hamburger with lettuce, tomato, and an onion. Hey, Frank, burn one, take it through the garden, and pin a rose on it. I'd like a piece of apple pie and a glass of milk, please. Eve with a lid and moo juice, Ernest. A hot dog with ketchup for Jimmy, and a serving of jello for me, if you please. Paint a bow wow red, Frank, and I need a nervous pudding. Well, Ernest, we made it through the first day. I'd like ham and with a potato and cabbage, please. Hi, Ernest. Noah's boy with a Murphy carrying a wreath. I'd like a vanilla milkshake with an egg in it to go. 
Would you give me a hand, Ernest? I need a white cow, make it cackle, and let it walk. I'll take the pancakes with maple syrup and coffee with cream and sugar. A stack with Vermont and a blonde with sand. I think we're getting better at this, Ernest. May I have an English muffin with butter and a cup of black coffee, please? Burn the British, cow to cover, and draw one in the dark. I'd like a tuna sandwich on toast, please, and a Dr. Pepper with the ice left out. Ernest, I need a radio sandwich down and an MD. Hold the hail. I would like two scrambled eggs on toast with a cup of tea with lemon, please. Adam and Eve on a raft, wreck them, and spot with a twist. Well, we did it. Gentlemen, the place looks beautiful, and I've heard nothing but good things from my friends who ate here in the past few days. You did a fine job, and I'll recommend your services to everyone I know. The end. You know, the reason this book was my favorite growing up was because I could make up my own diner language. Hey, I like that idea. I got one. How about fried shoestrings for french fries? Or sand with tan and a bit of sunblock for sugar cookies with icing? Guess this one. Take the leaves to the shower, give it a haircut, and give it some style. My guess is something with lettuce. Close. I was going for making a salad with vegetables. <laughs> Those are great. And I encourage everyone at home to use their creativity to come up with their own clever names for food. And who knows, you might impress adults with your new sophisticated language. Well, thanks for joining us, Dion. <laughs> Remember to check out your local library for more books on subjects that interest you. I hope you enjoyed our show today just as much as we did. Wow, all this talk about food is making me hungry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Wait, I forgot I'm surrounded by women. I better make sure they don't butter me up. <laughs> he never stops, does he? <laughs> no. And if there's something you're confused about, please email us at confusedtvshow at gmail.com. And if you're not sure how to do this, Ask a parent. We'd love to hear what questions you have for us. Well, that's all for us today. Remember, kids, be, be curious. curious.